Hey you guys doing? Welcome back to Country Mash. I hope you guys have been awesome. Today we're talking about the Athena BPR Mill Reticle from Primary Arms. Alright, so the Athena BPR Mill Reticle or Ballistic Precision Mill Reticle is Primary Arms Precision Reticle and so up until recently, you've only been able to get this reticle in their really high-end platinum scope, but they're starting to introduce it into some of their other lines of scopes, and so I actually have this test optic that they were gracious enough to send out to me to test and review. This is the 3 to 18 by 50, so this is part of their budget line. It's on the higher end of their budget line, um, but it's only $499.99. I do have a full review on this scope. Not with this reticle, but on this scope, if you guys want to check that out, um, it is, it's probably one of my favorites in this price range for sure. Um, but they are introducing this reticle in this scope, as well as some other scopes that will be coming out here pretty soon. But uh, we're going to be talking about the reticle today. Um, it is a little similar to the R-Grid reticle or the R-Grid 2B reticle, um, if you guys saw uh, the video I did on that, but it's a little bit different. So... We're gonna dive into this reticle today and go over the features, and I think I'm gonna show you guys how to range any size target with this reticle as well. Uh, I kinda like to share that that portion in, in my reticle videos. Just, I don't know, it's just good information to have. It's good to learn, so um, if you guys are interested in that, stick around, but let's start it off by talking about this reticle. All right, so we're gonna start off in the center of the reticle and work our way out just to kinda streamline things and make it a little bit easier to understand. So right off the bat, you're gonna notice that there's a chevron in the middle of the reticle. And those of you guys who are familiar with primary arms optics and reticles, you know they like to use the chevron for your point of aim and not your standard crosshair. And that's because the chevron has an infinitely precise tip. So as fine and precise as your eye can see is how precise you can use that reticle. Now the chevron itself has actually been measured to be 0.2 mils wide. So from the center to one side is one tenth of a mil. Just outside of the chevron, you are gonna see two mils worth of measurements marked at 0.2 mils. So it's gonna go from 0.2 to 0.4 to 0.6 to 0.8 to one mil. Now just outside of that, you're gonna have one mil of one tenth measurements. And since one tenth of a mil is such a fine measurement, they have it staggered up and down to make it easier to read. And the one-tenth mil radians are great for ranging any size target, which we'll get to in a little bit. Now for the mil grid itself, it extends out to the sides, six mils on each side, and it extends down 15 mils. Then you're gonna see some thinner and thicker dots that actually make up the grid itself, and those are at intervals of half a mil. Now to help you navigate the centerline crosshair, they've made it to where every half mil is a shorter hash mark, every one mil is a wider hash mark, and every five mils has brackets on each side to kind of make it look like a dumbbell. And this makes it easier so you don't get lost counting your hash marks or looking off to the sides. These smaller hash marks extend 0.05 mils out from the center, and the larger hash marks extend 0.25 mils out from the center. And adding more means of measurement really adds to the value of this reticle. And now for the centerline crosshair up on top of the reticle, that's for extreme long range shooting. So if you shoot 338 Lapua or 50 BMG or 300 Norma Mag, or if you're just really good at shooting 22 long rifle, you move your 100 yard zero up there and that extends 10 mils up. And that gives you a total of 25 mils of elevation for extreme long range shooting. Now you may have noticed the weird little brackets in the top right corner of the reticle. That's for ranging targets that are either 18 inches wide or five foot, 10 inches tall. So if you're ranging a target that's 18 inches wide, you just line up the width of those brackets to your target. And if the width of the bracket by the four lines up with your 18 inch wide target, then you know your target is about 400 yards away. To range targets that are five foot, 10 inches tall, you would do something similar, but place the bottom of your target at the horizontal crosshair. And if the top of the target is at the line by the six, you know the target is about 600 yards away. And this range estimator will work from about 400 to 1,000 yards. So now let's talk about how you can range any size target by using those 1 tenth mils. The only thing you're really gonna need to know is roughly how big your target is in inches. So for this example, my target is 18 inches wide. 
Now I know I just said that you can arrange an 18 inch wide target using that bracket, but this is just an example. You can do this with any size target, but my steel target just happens to be 18 inches wide. So we're gonna roll with that. So you're gonna start off by taking the size of your target in inches and multiplying it by the mill conversion number, which is 27.78. Now this mill conversion number only works on a mill reticle, so it's not gonna work with an MOA reticle, and it's gonna give you the distance in yards. So we're gonna take our size in inches, which is 18 inches, and multiply it by 27.78. And that's gonna give us 500.04. Now we're gonna hold on to that number real quick, and the next thing we need to do is measure how big our target is with that one tenth of a mil section. So if we hover the reticle over our target, you're gonna see that the size of a target is half a mil wide. So now we're gonna take that first number, 500.04, and divide it by half a mil, or 0.5. And that gives us 1,000.08. So we could kind of round that to 1,000 and say, this target is 1,000 yards away. So as you guys can see, it is really easy to do once you know the formula and work out a few examples to get comfortable with it. And yeah, it involves a little bit of math, but really a lot of us have cell phones now with calculators. And if not, you could bring a calculator or you can even bring a notepad and a pen. And so I actually have a laser range finder that I, I use typically just for my 100 yard um, zeros when I'm trying to uh, zero my scopes in. It's just quick and easy to do. Um, but I've used it for a, a few other targets in the past and a lot of times we would be missing and I'm always wondering, you know, is it, am I not dialing in right or is this reticle wrong? So I started ranging targets using this system and comparing it to what my laser rangefinder would say. And a lot of times my laser rangefinder was pretty off. So I thought that was pretty interesting and kind of disappointing in my laser rangefinder, but technology fails and so that's why it's cool to have optics like this that you can manually range a target and get better information so i uh, i've actually been i've been using that system for almost all my long range ranging now just because i can't afford a nice laser range finder but that's fine this system works great i use it all the time that pretty much wraps up this video guys i hope you guys enjoyed it and got some sort of value out of it if you did go ahead and hit that like button Thank you to everyone who subscribed to the channel. You guys seriously rock. I love you guys. And yeah, that's it for today's video. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you next time.